Destroito. He's come from two hours away across three mountains just to come to our uh, service that we're having here in the village today. And uh, just to tell you and to show you the perseverance of these pastors. Um, this pastor has a church up in a radical Hindu area and uh, he continues to serve the Lord up there faithful and true. His family couldn't come today because they're sick and he was sick as well, but he came anyhow because he wanted to hear the message and he wanted to be in fellowship and he wanted prayer for his family. And so this is just the perseverance I want to show you of the people that's here in India, the Christians that's here in India, how they're continuing and they've got such a hunger for the gospel, but they need more people to come and hold conferences and hold services and things like this and bring encouragement to them. And so I would encourage you to pray about coming and ministering here in India to uh, be able to meet wonderful people like Enos here. His name means Enoch, uh, just a great man of God, I can already tell. God bless you so much. God bless you, brother. Oh, me. God bless you so much. means gift. And the people behind me that you see, uh, these people have been driven off of their land with persecution. Um, some years ago, they uh, radicals came through and they burned their homes down. And many of these people, they had nice homes and they had church and all of these things. Uh, but when they came through, they burned the house down. One man, they burned him alive. And so now, uh, you see, this is their church, just uh, 10, and then they live in uh, small houses as well in this little area. This is a piece of land that was given to them, and so the name means a gift, and uh, this is the way that they're having to live. But even through all of this, they're continuing to praise the Lord and to sing praises and to, to pray and to seek the face of the Lord in this little 10 church. And so please pray for these people that are here in India that are still facing persecution on a daily basis. Uh, pray that God will bring an end to the persecution and that he will bring many to Christ, that the people who are doing the persecution, that they will see uh, who the real God is in the face of all the persecution and that they'll turn to Christ. That maybe someday that India will become a Christian nation. This is our prayer. Continue to pray for the resources of our friends here, that God would uh, give them another piece of land, that they can build another village, and they can build houses, and they can build a church, and, and they can get back to living life and forget about all these other things. So be in prayer for them. 
when you think about praise. Pray for India. God bless you. So you see right here, here's the small little houses that they're living in. Since the, they were driven off of their land and since they were driven out of the villages, uh, this is the kind of the shanty house that they've had to build with just pieces of tin and whatever they could find. This is the way they're living now. Uh, the very end of the row of, of houses here, these little houses, is where the little tin church is at that we were just in. And so you can see persecution is still real today. But in the midst of all this, they still continue to praise God and they still continue to worship in the face of persecution. So pray for these as we continue to walk down uh, this little path. You'll continue to see the little houses that they have and what they've been driven to. see the rocks on top of the houses here. These rocks are holding down the tin because when the wind comes, the wind takes away the tin. And so these rocks that you see here and these things that are thrown on top, these are to keep the tin held in place. And then their houses are so close to a little stream and then a big field, they tell us that they have problems with snakes and frogs even coming into their house. But once again, in the face of all this, they continue to praise the Lord. We have something to learn from the persecuted church um, at the way that they're continuing on in the face of uh, persecution, uh, persevering and overcoming with the power of the Lord. God bless you.
समस्ते निज निज स्थान ठिया Now you will find the power of God. Now you will find the presence of God. Now you will find all these things. Now you will have boldness. Because you committed your life to Jesus. Maybe you are here this afternoon. And you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You've never committed your life to Christ. And today, you say, I want Jesus to be my Savior. And today, you say, I want Jesus to be my Savior. I want to commit my life to Him. We pray that people just walking by the church, 
मंडली ग्रहों और निकट पर दे जात्रा करी बे। We feel the presence of God। सेवा नून को मध्य तुम्हारे पस्ती दी जानी बाकी दिया वाले प्राप्त करी। Father, when this church is finished, आओ जब तक ले मंडली ग्रहों पर उस तापना है बारों समाप्त है बो। We pray that many will be saved। आओ अन्य को लोग कोई मंडली और कार्य सेवा द्वारा उधर पांत वाले प्राप्त करी। Many backslid will come back। आओ जो लोग माने प्रभु तुम्हों को जानी आजी प्रभु से माने दूरे छंदे सेवा ने मुझे पुनर्बार फेरिया सेवा परिवेशिते प्राप्त करी। That Jesus would be glorified. I just returned back after a 10-day journey uh, into, uh, uh, we, well, I flew into location Vishakpatnam, but then we ended up driving another four to five hours beyond that into the next state uh, of the, the northeast region, uh, remote mountainous region of India here. Truly, after watching this video, you've seen just the great move of God that's taken place. Um, so many people came to the services as we would enter into a village. Uh, we would, they would meet us playing drums and, and singing and beating on tambourines and things like this. And for many of these villages, this was the first time that they ever remember a white person coming and, and, um, and ministering to them. The services that we had, they were packed out. Uh, there was no more room to receive the people. Many of the churches where we would meet, there would be people even gathered around the windows and around the door. Then when we gave invitation for salvation, there was no room in many of these villages to receive the people about the stage because the house was so full. We just had to ask people to, um, if they wanted to receive Christ, after explaining the gospel to them to raise their hand and, and then pray right where they were at. And then after the invitation was given for salvation, of course, there was the benediction, but there was always a line of people that wanted to pray for, they, want, they stayed behind and so many different um, struggles they wanted prayed for. Some stood in for family members that were lost and others were standing in for sickness. We've seen so many times pastors that would come down from mountains and they would want prayer for the people up in their villages. And uh, just amazing to see. My heart is still so moved at uh, the response that I saw on this trip after spending the 10 days there. Um, this area is so remote. Uh, there's They have shared electricity. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If no internet or anything like that, they're pretty much cut off from the world. A very tribal people, but such a loving and responsive people. We had opportunity to work alongside with uh, uh, our dear brother Chris, and then also the Canadian Baptist uh, Society. Just wonderful to see what God is doing up in this remote area. Um, and then going hut to hut even, or house to house, and praying for sick as we would leave one house. Uh, people would call from across the street and say, please come and, and pray at our house as well. And then we would leave that house and another would call to come and, and pray at that house. And then the testimonies that we heard after that of people that were being uh, healed, they would come back and tell us the next day how that God had touched them. And so uh, 
just so amazing to see what God has done here in India this time. Uh, we have plans. We have already started working on plans coming back January, February, and March of 2017. Um, there's two associations of churches here. Uh, one has around 100 members uh, churches. The other one has around 300 members with the Canadian Baptist. And so we have plans on coming back. And uh, my hope is, by the grace of God, to come and spend January, February, and some of March preaching in these different churches. And then in March, uh, the middle of March, they usually have a conference where the churches will come together. And so uh, we're planning on and praying uh, that God will continue to give us the strength to come back and, and preach for the two and a half months and then also preach this conference that they'll be having where the churches will be coming together. Once again, to see the people charged up and ready to go out and, and do the work of the Lord. I have to say, um, even sitting here trying to talk with you, so my heart is so moved. Thinking back over what I just got through experiencing, um, working with people who have been persecuted and, and then being able to go to one of the orphanages where there were the children that um, have lost parents through persecution. And um, I just stand humbled and amazed to, to see uh, their perseverance and the way that despite the many difficulties and the many challenges that they have to face, to still see um, the way they continue to sing and, and praise the Lord and the hunger that they have. So as you would pray, please remember India. Remember the faces of these that you've seen on this video. And then also, uh, I would ask you to continue to um, pray about coming and taking part of what's going on here in India. I want to thank you so much for those that continue to pray and those that continue to support because of your giving churches like Grace Baptist Church and Duns Grove and Charity Baptist and, and uh, Northwoods Assembly and, and um, so many others. Uh, I can't even I can't even remember them all right now. Um, my mind is just so taken. Thank you so much for your continued support and your continued prayers to make this ministry what it is. It's because of you praying and sending and so forth that we're able to be here doing what it is that we're doing. Tomorrow we leave to go to Kathmandu, to Nepal. I haven't been there since the earthquake. Uh, I left two weeks before the earthquake happened last time. And so I've heard many different reports. And so my prayer is that God would use us hopefully to bring hope to these as well. We love you so much and we just appreciate you so much and thank you for what you're doing to make this ministry possible. God bless you and we look forward to sharing more with you about what God is doing when we leave Kathmandu. Thank you again.